All right, so here we are uh, doing a quick little live stream. Kind of wanted to go over and uh, give, I guess, my opinions on this Harley Davidson premiere, and I'll kind of tell everybody why. So I've had my bobber now for a while. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I've had the bobber now for a while. I've had, I bought it in 2019, um, and I've been riding the pants off of it. You know, I've just hit 30,000, a little over 30,000 miles on the bobber, and I plan on upgrading it uh, probably pretty soon, switching to something else, uh, probably within the next year. Um, and I'm eyeballing some of the stuff that Indian had. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of the Chief. Uh, I like the Indian Springfield. Hey, what's going on, guys? And, um, you know, I'm not 100% sure which way I was going to swing. I've test ridden the Indians, the uh, Chief, both the uh, Dark Horse and the regular. I've test ridden Springfields. I've test ridden Chieftains. Um, I've test ridden Challenger. And I still just am not sure on where it is that I want to want to settle. And so, sadly, part of that may have been, or maybe me swinging over to Harley Davidson, um, the club that I ride in. Everybody, there's actually only two riders in that club that have Indian, myself and one other. And this announcement from Harley had me thinking, and it was like, wow, you know, if. Uh, if, if these guys are going to come out with a bike that's kind of centered where I'm at, like if anybody has seen, you know, the pictures of my Indian Scott Bobber, it's, it's a very club style bike. That's kind of the vibe I'm going for a uh, tour on it. I do all of the kinds of stuff on it. Um, you know, but you know, like I said, it's getting time to upgrade. So do I go and stay with Indian or do I go and stay and try Harley Davidson? So, we're going to talk about all of that, and we're actually going to break down a little bit um, the premiere because I watched the premiere. I don't know if everybody else, you know, took time today to watch the premiere, um, but some like real quick notes on the premiere. So it was kind of a big voiceover. It had the CEO on there a lot, um, talking about a handful of different things. It went through and brought in different people from the company. Um, it was more pointed towards them. There was no Jason Momoa <laughs> this year on their uh, uh, on their premiere. But they kind of started off and they highlighted what Harley Davidson had did in 2021. Um, you know, they had talked about the launch of the Sports Sportster S, the launch of the Pan America, and you know, the both of those bikes came with Revolution Max engines. And that actually, those releases of those two bikes piqued my interest. I'm not a fan of the Sportster at all. Like if I, you know, gonna do it, but I would be like. I don't want the sports I'll keep the bobber. I think those two are going to come, you know, be competitive, I think, um, between the sports and the bobber. But boy, when the Pan America came out, uh, if I'd had room in my garage, I would probably would have bought the Pan America like right there. Uh, I went and checked one out. I went and looked at it. Those are awesome bikes. And like the whole adventure community initially stubbed their nose at that Pan America, but it's just exploded. Like the sales on that thing are way up. Um, the, it was named the best adventure bike in 2021 by motorcycle.com. And it's a pretty nice bike. And so I think the evolution of like that revolution max engine, um, you know, has kind of got Harley Davidson thinking about a few different things. I was hoping that I was going to be able to see them putting that revolution max engine in something else. Maybe that was how they're going to do their performance bagger. Um, but they didn't. So we're going to talk a little bit, though, though about the performance um, baggers in just a minute. Um, so I think they hit like dead on in 2021 when they released the Pan America. Not so much on the sports stress, um, but like I said, it did highlight how cool that Revolution Max engine, I think, is going to be for Harley. And it's probably going to open up uh, a lot of great stuff for them in the future if they start building more platforms based off of, you know, that Revolution Max. So they started talking a little bit about 2022 and beyond. Uh, it kind of took them a while in that little preview to get to like the meat. And maybe it's because a lot of that uh, premiere, I wasn't interested in like all the cool colors and all that stuff. Like I wanted to see 
you know, what bike were they going to release that was going to make me excited? And, um, uh, you know, so they did, they took a while to talk about new colors, um, that's being released, the CVO lines, all that stuff. And, you know, then they finally got to the meat of it, which was what I was interested in. And we had all seen like them tease pictures of, um, you know, these ST model things that were floating around like the road glide and the street glide, and then possibly the low rider, uh, S, you know, getting a touring edition and they kind of, when, when they announced that they announced that specifically talking about, you know, touring is at their core and they really wanted to go and dive deep into the performance aspect of touring. You know, they brought up King of the Baggers race. They brought up, you know, them, the screaming Eagle team winning the King of the Baggers race or the championship with Kyle Wyman on the bike. Um, and from that experience, they wanted to kind of focus a bit more on performance given their experience at the King of the Baggers. Um, so that when they were start talking about that, I was like, okay, great. My interest is peaked. Now we're going to start showing um, some of this performance stuff that they're going to be doing. Because in my opinion, that's where Harley's been lackluster is performance. They just, um, you know, they haven't performed the best and it takes a lot uh, to get, you know, put into a Harley engine to, to get it to perform at least like I'm used to, like I want it to perform. Um, but anyway, that, that definitely piqued my interest. Um, so then they swung into it and they started talking about these ST models. Um, so the Road Glide ST, the um, Street Glide ST, and the uh, uh, Low Rider S ST. So those were pretty awesome um, reveals. And in a second, we'll jump over and I'll like, we'll dig around and we'll look at the uh, website about it too. Hey, what's up, Michael White? Um, so anyway, uh, with them talking about touring is at their core, they finally then switched uh, and they talked about um, that low rider ST. And oh my goodness, uh, that was teased. And I'm glad that that was um, that leak that they had came true. I'm pretty certain they leaked it, you know, on purpose. But I sure am glad that it came true. So, um, you know, from the performance side of what they're doing, those new ST models are going to come standard with the 117 in it, which you can easily upgrade to a 131. And if you've ever looked at like any of the numbers on the 117, it pumps out 125 foot pound of torque. And on something like a road glide, you know, that's cool, but it's not as impressive as when you look at like the weight of the low rider. Um, Cause it's 650 dry. So the regular low rider is going to be like 680 wet. And then, um, close to 800 pounds for the ST, but still that's, you know, while it's a heavy bike, that's a lot of torque for that bike. Um, so the other thing that they talked about with these performance models uh, that they're doing is, um, better suspension. They vastly improved lane angles. They raised them up a little bit so that the lean angles on these bikes, on these ST versions of like the, um, you know, the street glide and the road glide are much better. So you're going to be able to ride these things more performantly than you could before. Um, so kind of what has my eye and will I switch? Um, so I'm going to pause for a second before we dive into that, because I'm going to come over here and I'm going to answer some questions. Um, so I think, um, I think you can actually, Matthew, you can actually, I think, go to their website right now and play it there. I think they have it hosted on the, the Harley Davidson website. So if you wanted to watch the premiere from there, I think it's still available there. Um, and do Silva, um, Harley quality. So here's my opinion on Harley quality. A um, couple of years ago, they had problems. I think with, you know, recently their quality has gotten much better. Um, I think with being as competitive, you know, now as they have to be with Indian, um, they're kind of going head to head with Indian, you know, their quality has to be up there. Um, you know, and I ride with a bunch of dudes that have, um, Harley Davidson's. There's a couple of us that have Indians and, there's actually been more problems with the guys that have Indians than the whole herd of guys who have been riding Harley Davidson. Now that's just my sample of the group I ride with. So, you know, I don't think quality is really an issue anymore. Um, especially if you're going to buy a brand new bike and it's going to have warranty, all that stuff. So I don't, 
I don't think, you know, quality is really a problem anymore with, um, you know, with Harley Davidson. You always hear, that's the biggest issue about when people talk about the quality of a bike is you always hear um, the noise from the people who've had problems. And when you kind of weigh all that out with how many people have actually had problems versus, you know, the how many have had like great experience, um, you know, with Harley Davidson, I think you'll have probably more on the side of they've had a great experience. Um, same thing with, uh, with Indian, right? So if you go and you talk to a bunch of people, um, you know, about the Indian challenge challenger, if they own the challenger, you're going to say, Oh man, this is amazing. It was a great bike, but there's a couple of those that, that have just complained about the quality of the Indian challenger. So like, I don't think really quality is, you know, a concern anymore, at least not for me anyway. And uh, if anybody has any questions or topics or whatever they want to throw in, throw it in the side chat there. And, um, you know, I'm paying attention, so I'll snag them. We'll talk a little bit about it. Um, so, you know, we'll jump in and I'll, we'll, we'll kind of take a look um, around the Harley website because I think some of the stuff that's really cool about, you know, what they've announced. And I'm going to be a little biased. I'm going to focus a lot more on that. Lowrider S, Lowrider ST, because that's more my style. I'm not a big bagger kind of guy. Um, you know, I've ridden street glides, road glides, challengers, um, chieftains. I like them, but, you know, I don't see myself owning one of them. Um, and, it, you know, that's the same kind of a, a thing, whether I stay with Harley Davidson or, I, or whether I go with um, Harley Davidson or stay with Indian. I'm not a bagger guy. But boy, that low rider ST, um, boy, it hits me right square um, on the things that I like. Um, and, you know, right now for me, Indian is a little lackluster in that area. And they, I, to me, they need to do some kind of a refresh. You know, I don't like the Chief. Um, you know, I'm looking for something that is that, you know, that square performant bike that I can. Um, you know, rip around on the twisties, but also uh, take it, you know, the distance on the road. Uh, that, that's that's the bike that I want. Um, and I think really that Harley Davidson has kind of piqued my interest in that because when you look at the ST, the Lowrider ST, right, that's almost everything that I was hoping for uh, in a bike. So with this reemergence of the Lowrider, because they took it off, um, you, you know, the, the website for a while, it wasn't there. Uh, and, you know, now it's back because they renounced this or they announced this new Lowrider ST. Um, but I think it was everything that I was hoping it would be. Um, you know, it's 117. It's fairing. Uh, it's got a fairing. It's got the sport glide bags. So um, it's set up in a more performant, um, you know, aspect, I guess you, you could say. Because uh, it's going to be fast with that 117. And like I said, that's upgraded, upgrade, upgradable to a 131. And the price point for those, and let's just talk about this. We'll use an example here. We'll do Lowrider S versus, um, you know, pick an Indian. Um, so the Lowrider S and the Lowrider ST. So the S is going to come in at 18,000 and the ST comes in at 22,000. Um, they both come in with 117s and they've already got performance intake. All the things that you would typically want to do with a bike performance wise is already done. So in order for you to do something similar like that with Indian, you got to go buy the 116. Um, and when you buy the 116, you're now going to have to also go and do some additional stuff. If you want to eke out more performance from that 116 with an aftermarket, um, you know, intake, a tune and exhaust. So, you know, to get a 116, you know, you're spending quite a bit of money and then you have to spend more money on adding performance. And with this low rider S, low rider ST, Harley basically just said here, uh, it's a performance, uh, performance oriented bike. And we made it to be a performance oriented bike. Enjoy. It. And so the modifications that I would have to make on that bike out of the gate really are only handlebars, at least from what I could see. So I know that that price does seem high, the 20, 18, 20,000, that seems high for something like that. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're probably going to be saving money because it's already being given to you um, as a performance oriented bike. Um, so let's take a hot second and we'll jump over to, uh, to do, to do, to do. Let's see if I can share my screen. 
<laughs> there we go. All right. Sweet. I'll get my ugly mug out of the way and we'll take a look at this. All right. So sports dress is there. That was there this past year. They released that in 2021. When you look at the cruisers, um, you'll notice that there's a low rider S and the low rider ST. We'll jump into those in just a second because that's where like my interest lies is within that low rider family. Um, Adventure touring, they introduced some new colors and stuff like that for the Pan America. Um, and like I said, I'd be honest, if, I had space in my garage. I'd buy a Pan America tomorrow. That thing is an amazing motorcycle. Uh, and then you've got the whole Grand American Touring. Um, and then there's the Road Glide ST and the Street Glide ST. So we're going to jump over because I'm biased and I'm going to talk more about this uh, Lowrider ST. So this is where my interest lies. This is if I were to leave Indian. This is what I would leave Indian for. And out of the gate, this is the bike. It's $22,000. It comes in two colors. It comes in as black and it's going to ship gray. Um, it comes with, like I said, the uh, sport glide bag. So it's got bags. One downside, I guess, is that it's the clamshell bag, which is not that big of a deal. Um, but, you know, you're getting bags. And then you're also getting... Um, you know, that old school ferry. So it looks, I think, pretty sweet. And out of the gate, like I said, you're getting a 117 uh, and you're getting, you know, the performance intake, it tuned, all that stuff. So D. Sylvia asked if I, if I was going to, would I keep the Scout if I got a low rider or would you trade it in? Um, I would trade it in. I can't, I can't have multiple bikes in my garage, sadly. Um, not with kids still being at home. Um, and the way that I ride my scout is how I would ride, how I would ride this low rider ST anyway. So to me, they're my, my use of them would be very similar. Um, cause I do go out and I ride a lot, uh, put a lot of miles on the bike. I do tour on the bobber, which is, you know, most people don't, but I do. Um, and I've got mine set up to let me tour on it, which is fine. And one of the reasons why I I always I, I never said you know what screw it I'm going to get rid of the bobber and get a touring bike, um, given the miles that I put on the bikes, was because I like to get to the place, and then when I get to the place I love being able to hit the twisties, rip it up, ride aggressively, um, and so to me, I really wasn't interested in getting a bagger or something like that where. Um, I wasn't going to be able to swing it around and throw it around like I could the scout. I think I will be able to do that uh, with this low rider ST if I were to go this direction. So, you know, you'd be able to get in there and ride this sucker. Um, I think I could probably ride this just like I do my, uh, my scout, to be honest. So answer no, I wouldn't have to. It would have to be one or the other. And I know I'm going to upgrade to a longer range bike because I'm going to be doing a lot more traveling. Um, you know, I'm about to send one kid off to college, so that'll be an excuse to get on the bike and go visit him where we send him off to. Um, so I will be doing next year, I will be doing a lot more riding, um, long distance anyway. So there will be an upgrade in my future. Is it this, or is it going to be something from Indian? I don't know. We're going to have to see what Indian comes out with when they do their release, you know, next year. I don't think we're going to see anything from them this year, but we'll see what they do next year. So, um, you know, the, I mean, like I said, you know, the price point for this thing, um, flip it over and take a look at what it looks like in Thunder Black or not in Thunder Black, Vivid Black. See, I'm, I'm like stuck in Indian slang. <laughs> I'm calling it Thunder Black, Thunder Black, Vivid Black. And, um, honestly, that's, a. Uh, I think I would probably end up going Vivid Black. Like there's just something about that black the blacked out engine, everything all blacked out. Um, I don't know that I, I like that quite a bit. Um, I, you can't find too much information, at least right now on like the upgrades that they're going to make available to you, like uh, accessories. I haven't done any digging on the website, so maybe they're already out and I just haven't found them. Um, 
and, and what kind of other accessories that they'll they'll make available to it. Um, but I do know that um, spin this around. We'll take a look at the fairing from this side. So I do know that inside the fairing, they did show uh, that this thing can have a sound system in it. Um, and I think they'll be offering the one of the accessories that they'll be offering is a Rockford Fosgate system. I don't think the 21749 price tag is going to include the stereo system, but um, I'm pretty certain that you're going to find all kinds of other aftermarket stuff that you'll be able to throw in there for a stereo. Um, and then I don't know how much that Rockford Fosgate system is going to be. My guess is it's probably going to be thousand dollars for that system. So it's expensive, but you at least will be able to get something in there, get a stereo in there. And I think that looks, uh, that looks pretty sweet. I really do like to look at that. Um, so, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. You are absolutely right. The gas gauge. It's funny. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I threw one up there about the, the, the bobber, um, struggle. Because I was literally riding down the road, wasn't paying attention, looked down, and gas light was on. I was like, God dang it. So I had to go turn around, go find a gas station. Uh, that happens more often than not, especially when I get out and I'm riding and I'm vlogging or I'm doing a video. I don't pay attention to my gas until I look down and be like, oh, crap. Because <laughs> that struggle is real. So getting a gas gauge would be great. Um, but anyway, so... Um, Opinions. What do you guys think about the uh, uh, this Lowrider ST? Um, I spent a lot of time talking about this bike because I think from the Harley bikes, this is the only one that I that I care about. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Before they did this announcement, like a couple of months ago, um, I looked around and you know I was potentially going to do a Sport Glide. Um, I rode the Sport Glide and it was a crazy nimble bike and it was fun but it had a 107 it was dog slow didn't have that you know crack of the throttle that i wanted um you know and that's the problem coming from a, a you know riding the bobber is man that's a fast bike and when you get it tuned it's a crazy crazy fast bike so i can't go from that to a dog so you know i couldn't do the um you know the sport glide I was like, dang, so I forgot about that. And then when I heard this was possibly coming, I was like, oh, hmm, maybe this could be could be the answer. But, you know, we'll see. We still have some time um, for me to make this decision. I was already showing my wife pictures of this uh, to start seeding the idea that I may be asking <laughs> to, <laughs> to upgrade a bike. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, like – like y'all are saying there, the biggest thing, the biggest issue about the bobber is the um, is the gas gauge. That's an irritant. Um, they could have kept it in there. Whatever. <laughs> How the two different sized bags look? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. Um, I need to see it up in person. Um, the sport, the, these are the bags that came on the sport glide. And, you know, back when I was looking, I went and like stood and sat on the sport glide and touch road one. Um, I like the bags, um, on the sport glide. And so I don't know how they're actually going to look, um, really on this bike. So, you know, when they, um, do the, when, when they actually get these in the dealerships or when they start to do, um, demo, you know, demo rides and that kind of stuff. Um, that's when I really will get on this thing and, and, and make a decision, um, on whether or not it's something that I end up moving to. So, um, yeah, I don't know, you know, what everybody will look, look for in the next bike that they upgrade to, but, you know, for me, it's definitely a bit more on the, uh, on the comfort side, um, you know, when I bought the bobber, I wasn't expecting that I was going to do all the writing that I did, um, or that I do. And it just kind of occurred and I was like, well, you know, it's the bike I have. So, you know, we'll make it work. Uh, but I do know that going forward, the next bike will be much more comfortable. It's still got to be performant. Uh, needs a gas gauge. <laughs> 
I can do without a stereo system. I'm not too worried about that. So, you know, this, uh, this bike right here may be, you know, the thing that I moved to, it may be for me. Um, anyway, um, the other thing that is great about thinking about Harley Davidson is the availability of the aftermarket stuff. That's the one thing that bothers me a lot about Indian is there, you, you don't have as much access to, um, some of the aftermarket accessory providers. Um, and so modding the bikes, you know, takes a little bit, you've got to find the people who are doing the modifications who are doing the parts for it. Um, so, you know, I don't, you know, I know for certain that there's going to be a crap ton of accessories, crap ton of third party accessories built for these new bikes. I think they're going to be pretty popular. Um, Oh, so the ordering. So um, I called the dealer up today and the you can start the um, you can start the ordering now. So you can reach out to your dealer now, start the process um, of getting it ordered and they won't land in dealerships until April. So now until April. And, you know, for me, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to buy it this year. I'm pretty certain I won't, uh, unless it's, you know, super magical, then who knows? Um, I typically don't like buying something that when it first comes out, I, I like to usually wait a year and, and have them work through some issues before I even think about purchasing. Um, but it, these are supposed to be available in April. And I think that's true with all of the new ones that they that they uh, released. I think it's saying the same with um, the other ST models, which were the Road Glide ST and the Street Glide ST. So, you know, with them, with Harley Davidson taking the more um, sport approach to touring, um, to me, that's pretty exciting. Um, you know, especially if I'm going to be able to cram that much power into a bike and also be able to take it on the long haul to me, that's, to me, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I, something I really look forward to and hopefully, hopefully Indian comes up with an answer. Um, I don't know. Um, to be honest with you, we'll have to see what, like I said earlier, what happens when they do their, you know, announcement for, for next year. But right now everything's pretty lackluster. You know, the Springfield is my, probably the only thing right now that I like from the Indian line that is not the bobber. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I know you can, uh, buy that bike, uh, an older version of the bike probably. Um, I know you can cause I've seen them and I have started looking. So I was like, well, if, if really all they're doing is they're, they're taking that bike and putting a fairing and some bags on it, people have already done that to the low rider, to the older versions of the low rider. So if you wanted to, to do that now, you could. Um, I think the problem though, is the low rider, um, at least back then, the, the, the previous years, the low rider didn't come with cruise. I think this one comes with cruise. So I don't want to go out and buy a, whole another cruise system and aftermarket cruise my bike again. That was a pain in the neck. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's really it. Um, you know, I kind of wanted to give everybody my idea on where I'm going to be going next possibly. Um, and yeah, it truly is. I'm on the fence. There's this next few months, I think are going to be decisive whether or not I swing from Indian to Harley Davidson. And, you know, truly, I've been a big Indian fan. Any of the guys who ride with me know how much I love my Indian. Um, but you know, sometimes they, uh, you got the, these companies, they don't change with the times. They don't produce the products that, um, certain people want. And it takes a switch uh, in order for you to find, you know, that next bike, that next thing that you want. And that may be the case with me. So never know. Anyway, I appreciate y'all, uh, sticking around. I appreciate y'all watching me blabber on about this. Um, you know, do me a favor. If you haven't already liked this, give it a like. Um, and then, uh, we'll see you uh, in the next video video tomorrow drops. Uh, that video tomorrow is specifically about the Indian syndicate seat. Um, I ordered it, got it in, installed it, recorded a, a 
overview of it, um, and then it'll uh, air tomorrow. So y'all take it easy. Y'all have a good one, and y'all be safe. Love y'all. See you.